Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the seventh of 12 talks in the 2022 Ottawa Sailing Community Winter Speaker Series, hosted by the Nepean Sailing Club. My name is Stephen Kidd, and I'm your MC tonight. Park is away. This series continues until April 6th, and you can find the full listing of the speakers and topics on our website, nsc.ca. All the talks are being recorded and posted to YouTube. Just search there for Nepean Sailing Club. We're in our 16th year of these talks. We have them to get sailors together in the winter, inform, entertain, and inspire, and raise donations for the Legacy Fund to support youth, able, and other sailors in their training and participation in regional, national, and international competitions. While these talks are free of charge, we typically pass the beer jug when in person for contributions to the Legacy Fund. But this year we've set up a donation system using Eventbrite and we encourage you to contribute as able. To date, we've raised over $1,200. Thank you so much for your generosity. These talks are run by a team of four of us. Tony Wright is tech and advertising guru who rises to every technical challenge in the background and effectively gets the word out about the talks. Park Davis, out of town this week, majors on the MC duties and gives expert guidance to the effort. Ron Evans, our recent new addition to the team, amazes us with his technical expertise and sophistication in video editing, so you now see these talks posted very quickly on YouTube. And I help with finding speakers, scheduling, and otherwise mostly work behind the scenes with Tony and fill in for Park as MC when needed, like tonight. Let us know if you'd be interested in chatting about how you can help out in some capacity. The wider a variety of perspectives we have, the better. And by the way, I know there are a lot of knowledgeable and experienced sailors and boaters among you. And if you'd like to speak or know someone who has a story or experience to tell, or have ideas yourself for topics you'd like to see on our roster, please contact us at a new email address, winterspeaker at nsc.ca winterspeaker at nsc.ca. Well, just before we get to tonight, let me tell you about next week's presentation. Michelle Simon, a former NSC sail training director and now lead for NSC Adaptive Sailing, will recount the journey of how NSC became, came to host the Able Sail program. She'll talk about our NSC facility, whom we serve, what programs we offer, and how to get involved. Not one NSC Able Sail participant, for instance, leaves the dock without being assisted by at least one of our many dedicated volunteers. We've come a long way since George Simpson originated the Able Sail program at Nepean Sailing Club in 1996. Today, NSC is recognized as a Paralympic training sailing facility and includes a fleet of Martin 16 sailboats. NSC has been a proud contributor to and also a host of the International Mobility Cup a so-called regatta of possibility. So come and join us next week at this time to hear about Able Sail. Well, now to tonight's presentation. It's all about the NSC Harbor and Yard. James Pohl, our Marine and Property Manager, and Paul Wagner, former Harbor and Yard Director, tag team to present the ins and outs of your rights and obligations as members when navigating the harbor or using the NSC Yard. James and Paul will do some myth busting and provide all the information you need to get your boat into the water in spring and out again in the fall, as well as everything in between. They'll cover how to access and use the extensive facilities at NSC, as well as the various services and volunteer groups that are available to members. Whether you're new to the club or a long time member, it's a great way to start thinking about launching your boat. Just 10 more weeks. It's never too early to plan. A note before we start, uh, if you have any questions you think of during the presentation, please use the Q&A icon or button at the bottom of the screen and go ahead and list them there and we'll get to them all at the end of the presentation. And also we're enabling you to see everybody else's questions and upvote any question that you see by clicking on the uh, thumb up that's there. All right, uh, over to you, James and Paul. 
Awesome. Thank you, uh, Stephen. And thanks for the promotion. Um, I don't think I was actually ever a director of the Harbour and Yard. I'm just a member. I'm just one of those oh, guys. Oh, <laughs> I've, I've held a couple of positions and enjoy volunteering, but uh, happy to be here with James Pohl. Hello, everyone. And um, yeah, Corey, take the promo. Um, yeah, maybe not tonight. We'll, uh, we'll get to it. So listen, folks, uh, we're here tonight. Hopefully you all have a libation in hand. We'll have a little... Uh, a little chat. We'll go through a couple of slides, and um, the, the goal of this is really to open it up at the end, have some you know questions and answers. Um, you know, great to see 15 out of uh, I think it was what 40 or 50 people online, brand new to the club. Awesome! So you'll get some new information. 21, uh, what I'll call old timers. Uh, they'll be correcting us as we go through this, and maybe have some questions of their own. Um, so I think it'll be a, a, a pretty cool. Uh, Pretty cool uh, shot in, in terms of uh, looking at what we can do in the yard and the harbor. So this is this is what tonight's supposed to look like. So this is how it should feel when you see us on the screen. Um, and so there you go, minus the toques. Um, so to get us started, um, this is what we'll be going through tonight. So a bit of what the harbor is is all about, the yard, some facts. Um, you know what you're. What you're looking at in terms of size of, of, of the harbor, size of the yard, uh, some of the information resources that are available to you. There's a ton of resources on the on the website. Um, we're not going to do a deep dive into policies and rules, but we will cover some of the main ones that you need as you're as you're ripping up and down the uh, uh, the laneways in the in the harbor. Um, use of our service docks, cranes, uh, some of our, our buildings. We'll talk about different types of launches and haul out options that we have. Um, some of the expectations around what's happening in spring. Stephen said, you know, we're only 10 weeks away. That's not a long time. Um, talk a bit about the Harbor Committee, which uh, both uh, James and I are on, and then talk a little bit about uh, mooring allocations and what you can do uh, in terms of volunteering. James, anything you want to add there? No, that's perfect. Paul. So there's a, we were actually just spending, James and I spent about the last five or seven minutes while everybody was logging on, looking at this picture from Google Earth. And we're trying to figure out, and, and we'll give, you know, I'll, I'll buy a rum for anybody who can figure out what time of the year this is. And, and we also didn't figure out where you could find that in Google Earth. But it's kind of interesting because if you look at some of the tells, uh, the, the harbor is absolutely full. Nobody's out. So it's probably a weekday. Um, not a lot of people in the parking lot. Can't figure out whether it's really fall or summer. So there's your, uh, there's an idea that you can, you can hop on Google Earth. And while we're going through this, figure out uh, what time of the year that was. So our next, hang on here, next slide. James, maybe. Yeah, just COVID protocols as we all move forward. Hopefully everything is starting to loosen up. Uh, after this week, the doors will to the club will be open when the bar is open. Uh, masks for now are still required while moving around the club. Um, but once you're at your table and seated, uh, feel free to remove your masks and enjoy a beverage of your choice and some food from our good cook, Stephen. Um, notes for this season coming up, the harbor is currently full. We have a wait list. Uh, knock on wood, no locusts this spring. Um, launch will happen as a normal year and uh, we'll have a full summer of activities planned and everything should operate as normal, hopefully this summer. I think, it'd be the, I think that's the first spring or summer where it will actually happen normally. We've had floods. We've had uh, COVID. Two floods, COVID. Two floods, two COVID. Yeah. So lot, lots uh, lots has changed over the last few uh, few years and has shown the uh, agility of the club to react to that. And I think the longest we, uh, there's one flood where maybe launch, the, the club launch was delayed by a couple of weeks, but that was about the extent of it. And uh, that's all thanks to the volunteers and a lot of people that are on this call tonight. Um, I don't know why that's not working. There we go. So this is what the, well, the yard and the harbor don't look like this today, um, but that's what you can expect. So, you know, as we get into spring, um, the, uh, you know, the docks get, the, uh, the docks get moved, we open up the harbor and uh, launch can, can begin. So that's what is a hopeful view in, let's call it, uh, I don't know, eight weeks. There's usually a good, uh, a, uh, bingo that we play around when the ice will melt. So uh, hop into the club, grab a beverage, and uh, you can start looking at when you think that's going to happen. So some of the, as I mentioned, some of the, um, some of the, the specifics around the yard and the harbor, 
Um, we've got over three kilometers of dock infrastructure that have almost all been changed in the last couple of years. Um, we've got 501 wet mooring slips. So those are all of the, uh, the slips that you see in the harbor. There's 119 dry sail and 42 trailer launch slips. And an important, for, especially for the, the new members, I mean, I think everybody here has a boat uh, probably in the yard or uh, has been here before, but this is always a, a point of contention, but the, the max length that we accept in terms of boats is 37 and a half feet, 12 uh, and, a, and three quarter feet uh, beam and five and a half feet draft. Uh, so that sort of gives you the, the kind of box within which uh, we can accept boats. A lot of that is because and we'll talk about it a little bit later, just depth of Harbor, size of slips, um, you know, and, and ensuring that we can have maneuverability around the uh, the docks. Uh, it's a really, really critical piece as we start to, you know, figure out the Tetris that is the uh, the harbor. And then we also have uh, a pump out and service dock areas. Uh, James, maybe pump yeah. out here. So for the yard, there's 12 acres or almost 12 acres of enclosed space inside of our fence line, which house the dinghy and... Uh, I hate to use the word trailer park, but that's what it turns into <laughs> sometimes. Uh, it also houses all the winter storage of every single boat that stays on site. Um, summer parking, once we get the yard shuffled on in the spring, we can have secure parking for our members inside the fence line. It also houses the sailing school and the dry sail area, which we are going to coin as the park. Um, and you'll see some of that coming ahead in, in later in the, in the presentation. And there is electrical power and water at different pedestals located throughout the yard. And yeah, the yard is, it's, you know, as, as James said, really important. It serves a whole lot of purposes. And, and, you know, one of the big things that we're lucky to have from a club perspective is, is that, you know, 12 acres where in the winter, and you know, you'll see a couple of shots later on, um, what the yard looks like and how, you know, the service providers, how the uh, club launch, uh, works to actually stuff an incredible amount of boats into that, into that 12 acres. And in the summer becomes a very, very versatile area where, you know, as James says, we've got school, sailing school going on. We've got trailer, trailer launch boats. We've got people, you know, who have uh, stored their boat for a summer for uh, a variety of reasons. So it's, we're, we're really, really lucky and blessed to have that. It'd, love, it'd be great to be bigger, um, but um, we're really lucky to have that space for now. Um, this is an unfortunate picture, and I'm sure Corey's probably laughing. And uh, anybody who was around during the floods, that is actually one of our docks uh, on the um, uh, which rapids is that? Is that Lac Chain, Lac 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 Chain rapids. Um, it, it one of our docks broke loose and actually floated down river, and uh, we or it got stopped somewhere uh, just, just on the back Island side Park. of well, not not as far as Island Park, just the oh. back side of uh, Mud Lake and the filtration plant. And we were able with a whole bunch of volunteers to pull it apart, uh, crane it out and float it back to the club and reinstall it back in position. So uh, floods are real. And uh, again, thanks to the, 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 uh, the volunteers for helping to get that back. We hope to never see that again. Um, it's a, a horrifying scene when you look out and you don't see a dock because that's not an insignificant piece of infrastructure. Oh, oh sorry, Paul. Just one uh, quick thing on that last slide, the, uh, the dinghy sailors. I know you've been complaining about the uh, floating balls around the dinghy docks, the tea docks. They're there to mark uh, temporary anchors so we can recover them spring and fall. But this March, when we are finishing the anchoring of, of the rest of the infrastructure, we'll be putting permanent anchors back in and those floating balls that mark the anchors will be gone. So they won't be causing a hazard to dagger boards and everything else while you're trying to work around the dinghy docks, just as a, as a hopeful look forward to this year, those will be gone. Perfect. Um, so this is our harbor. Uh, and in terms of layout, we, we have all of the, uh, the docks uh, labeled by letter. Um, so A, B, C, D, E. Uh, the cross dock that you see at the bottom here is, is X dock. And then over here is, is what's known as W dock. And so uh, this shows you the number of, of slips on each of those docks. Um, so you in the spring, and we'll talk about mooring allocation in a couple of slides, but you'll get a, a, an allocation for your boat uh, in terms of where the, where you're going to be uh, for the summer. And that allocation is based on the type of boat you have, the depth, it, uh, it, 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 what it draws. Um, so as you can imagine, this harbor, as you get further out to this side of the harbor, 
it gets much shallower. So you're going to see, you know, a lot of the bigger boats are going to be in this area and the boats that are smaller that don't need the same kind of draft are going to be out here. Um, the, those are the six main docks plus that cross dock. Um, out here we have where we have the dinghies and the skiffs. So this is this is the the the, the park that uh, we we're talking about in terms of where all of the uh, the dinghies, the cats, and the skiffs um, park over the over the summer. It's it's basically a dry harbor, uh, and so they have allocated spaces where they uh, have their boats, and then they have access to the two um, ramps that we have here, um, just off the back of the yard. Um, and the depth of the harbor, and I'm not sure if this is still accurate, but uh, we're saying, you know, somewhere between 4.5 and 8 feet. Now that said, there are, I think there's a couple, there's a couple of little uh, uh, anomalies. challenges and anomalies to that, right? There is a, there is a hard pan ridge that comes off of the North Crane well, right, right underneath there. where it says dry sail that runs diagonally across the harbor to the public launch ramp in a big long swoop. So like this? Yeah. If you, if the water is low and you draw five feet or better and are planning to use the North Crane well for masting, demasting, if you hug the service dock to the north side, you can get in and out. If you drive straight in and line up for the well, you will touch bottom. Um, so usually after two feet below data. So it's just it's just one of those tricks to the harbor. If you hug that service dock almost to the point where you get out and walk your boat around, you you will have no problems getting in and out. It's just right out in the middle there. There is a lump and it's hard play. Um, you won't do any damage to the boat, but you might damage the chicklets on the steering wheel. The personal experience, or I've seen it happen. <laughs> not me personally. Now, uh, one of the things James said in terms of uh, you know whether or not we're above or below datum uh, website always has that information uh, on it. The other thing too, you can look over here near the uh, south crane. You, we actually have a an indicator that'll show you whereabouts we are in terms of datum. Um, it, it's it's an approximation, but uh, you know know that no it's is it close? It's pretty good. Yeah. So you know 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 the know how what your boat draws and uh, and definitely check out you know on a regular basis because uh, it will certainly in the spring and the fall you're going to see wild fluctuations if we've got a you know really dry summer uh, you're going to see that change. But also don't forget way up up river from here we don't control the water flows and so those things can change throughout the year and so you just really need to be aware of that as a, as a sailor and uh, and govern yourself accordingly. And datum is just a, a reference number on the charts that is where all the depths are taken from and start on the paper or now electronic charts. So when we're talking plus or minus datum, it means say the water depth is five meters on the chart. You look at the datum, if it's a meter below that, you're now in four feet of water from what the chart is saying. So that's something to take into consideration when you're when you're looking at charts. Perfect. All right, next up, um, this guy, James Pohl, uh, Marine and Property Manager. So a couple of things that, you know, really, I mentioned the website, really, really rich um, website, has a lot of information, a lot of history. Um, so you'll see the yard and the harbor page there. If, if you, you know, you, if you're not gonna click on, on, this, uh, on this link, and I think we talked about potentially uh, posting the links afterwards uh, on the YouTube video, just as a bit of an, uh, an addendum, um, but really easy to navigate to if you go to our website. The mooring allocations, you need to be logged in. Uh, so to see the mooring allocations, so you'll be able to see yours and, and everyone else's mooring allocations. Um, the launch and haul out preparation procedures, we'll talk about that in a little bit in terms of what we, you know, what's expected of you um, and the different options that you have available to you in terms of launching and hauling out. Um, Various directives. So we just went through a whole bunch of COVID protocols. Anything that's going to be new and uh, you know really relevant in a, in a moment in time, you'll be able to find there. Uh, hazardous waste disposal instructions. We've got some great uh, facilities around that for for hazardous waste disposal. Um, really important if you're going to be launching or hauling out your own boat, um, the online crane booking tool. Again, you need to be able to you need to log in for that, but you can book the crane online. Um, which is really important because, you know, otherwise, if you think you're just going to show up and kind of use the crane, um, you may be disappointed uh, probably more often than not if you're going to be doing that. There's a few instructional videos and uh, you can always send um, James an email. Anything on there? 
No, so reach out whenever, if you have any questions or any doubts, reach out. It's, it's easy to answer questions than just have people stumbling around. <laughs> you, want, you want to talk about the general rules of the harbor? Sure, general rules of the harbor. Um, the authority of the harbor, if, if we want to go that crazy of using the word authority, is the rear commodore and harbor master, which is currently Corey Glenn. Uh, I think this is his second time around as harbor master, has been. He didn't get it right the first time, so yeah, he gave yeah, another shot at it. Yeah. Stuff, right? yeah, pulled him back into the loop with the. Um, <laughs> just some do's and don'ts. Uh, most of this will be old knowledge, but it is good to refresh the brain. Um, filling gas or diesel tanks in your slip is prohibited at the club. Please come over to the service dock and do it there. There's a couple of reasons we do it. If there is a fuel spill, it's a lot easier to deal with it at the service docks, nice and close to shore where all the equipment is. Um, it also just lets us keep an eye on everything. The other big thing about fueling is if you fuel early in the spring and fill your tank to 100%, as it warms up, your tank will leak through the vent hole and cause a mess in the harbor. Please, 90% is great. You don't have to press your tanks full. Um, discharge of contaminants in the water. Please, no overboard discharge in the harbor. That includes antifreeze, fuel, bilge water. Uh, I'll have a perfect hit for Matt at uh, the Chandlerly. If you have a dirty bilge, please, before you put the boat in the spring, Get some bilge cleaner, clean her up, and you can also purchase the bilge socks. They only suck up hydrocarbons, they don't suck up water. If you have room in your bilge and are you using a bilge pump, they're a great thing to have. Um, and ensure your boat is securely moored. Tie your boat up. Uh, there are rules in the harbor policy on what size rope you need to use and how many, and we're not going to get into that. I'm sure everyone is a great, has great seamanship. Just uh, make sure everything's tied up nicely. Um, nothing worse than having to run out in a windstorm and add extra lines to people's boats. I can grab the next one. Grab a, grab a sip there. Sure. So um, boats can't overhang docks. So you know the, the there's a, a little bit of an exception for that. Um, so the idea being that as you're walking down the docks, the docks are pretty narrow, and you know we, we made it we made them large enough that you can have you know two people crossing each other, both with uh, a, a trailer or a little dolly. Um, and, but we do make an exception for 14 days after the club launch. Um, you know, people who've launched their boats, in some cases, the masts will hang over the docks. You know, put something bright on them, put, hang something off of them so that we can see them. Uh, there's a couple of boats uh, that have extremely long masts. You know, you, you, you can really only get kind of one member around them. Um, so just be, you know, aware of that. But once we're into season, uh, there's going to be nothing kind of overhanging the dock area. Um, you can't you can't modify the dock. So don't forget, you, you're allocated a slip for the summer. Um, you don't own that slip. That's not something you can put in your will and you know, send it off to your kids. Um, and you can't modify it. So, you, you know, lights, bumpers, people try to put all kinds of things. Um, what happens is as you're screwing things into the docks, you're actually, you know, ruining them. Uh, we just went through a huge dock um, remediation project where we changed all the top sides of the docks. And you know there, there were an awful lot of um, member additions to those to those docks, and it really does compromise the wood. It compromises uh, you know the infrastructure that we have. So um, you know we don't have any modifications there. Um, if there's if you ever have a spill, absolutely let uh, Gene, uh, let uh, James, Gene, let uh, let James or anybody who's around from the from the club um, know that the spill has happened. We have spill remediation kits, and so we can take care of that. The worst thing you can do is think, well, you know, no one will notice. People will notice, and and you know, we've got great relationships right now with a lot of the um, the River Keep and some of the other environmental agency organizations. And we've got you know a really great track record with that, and that's because of the way that we actually handle these situations when they when they come about. Um, you know, navigation rules in the harbor. I'm gonna let you talk about this one because I know you you got, you got a good story on this one. Um, just everyone's boating, so please respect the rules of navigation. Watch your wakes. Um, the one thing that is very important to watch is our lovely able sail platform at the end of W Dock. There are winches out there that they hoist humans in to put into boats. If you see somebody hanging in a sling, 
please do everything in your power to reduce your wake, even if it means doing a lot before going by so that we can get these awesome people into their boats and have them enjoying sailing as well. Yeah, so that's this area right here. I mean, you know, you should be going no wake throughout the whole harbor because, you know, people are sitting on their boats, people are doing all kinds of things, but the real critical area is, you know, is that spot where, uh, you know, as James said, there's there's a bunch of people, you know, trying to get into boats and it's not the easiest thing, especially if there's any wind, um, you know, being, making sure you know the effects of wind on your boat in the harbor. If you've got a whole bunch of canvas, you got, you know, Bimini, Dodger, um, you know, maybe some sails still out because you weren't able to get it all wrapped up. That's going to affect your boat differently. And so you just need to be aware of what that does to your, uh, to your boat. Also at the end of W Doc, uh, you will now see a big sign that says emergency dock. Um, I think that they're 12 inch red letters. This location is for members who have lost engine power, have I've used it, have, are having a problem. <laughs> Um, if it's, it's just, if it's just plain too windy to get to your slip on the backside of the D pull in there, tie up, call the office, let us know that you're there. Um, you'll probably find a mechanic sitting at the end of the dock ready and waiting. Um, Peter's usually out there as boat is in that location. Uh, but just let the office know we can, we can route you or staff can come out and help tow you through the Harbor to get back to your slip. It's just there for peace of mind so that you don't feel constrained to getting to your slip. And, you know, it, it is a club, right? And I think, you know, the, the little side sidebar there around, don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, there's a lot of people who've been here for an awful long time and should still ask for help. There's a lot of people that are just brand new who absolutely should ask for help. We're all learning. And there's always going to be a situation where you get into, I've seen, you know, absolutely fantastically seasoned sailors who I would cross oceans with get into situations where, you know, asking a question would have made all, all the difference. So don't ever feel like, you know, your ego is too big or whatnot. Um, there's a lot of learning. There's a lot of different things in the harbor. It changes, you know, quite regularly as we get new services, new boats, new uh, new policies in some cases. So, you know, there's there's no shame in, in asking for any help from, from either an, another club member or certainly uh, from anybody in the, uh, from, uh, in the office or on the harbor committee. In terms of you, you know, in terms of the yard. So here's the picture I was talking about. That's what the yard looks like in the winter, um, and it's, it was incredible. This is one of the first pictures we took with a drone a few years back, and we were, you know, we, we've got. We'll talk about some of the service providers in a minute. Uh, you know, service providers that put the boats in, they line things up, and you know, we knew we were making pretty efficient use of the yard in the winter. We didn't think it was this efficient. And so this was a real sort of eye opener for us when, when drones became a thing. And we started to see how efficient uh, the yard was being used in the winter. Um, re really important though, when you're in the yard, you know, and typically you're gonna be in the yard, um, you know, when you're getting ready, your boat ready to get launched, or if you've got a, a dinghy or a, a trailer sailboat or a trailer launch boat, be aware of the movement of the other boats and the vehicles in the yard. Um, don't leave any items hanging around the yard. Again, similar to your slip, it's, it's, you know, it doesn't belong to you. You can't put it in the wheel. Um, if you're, if you're going to work on the, your boat, bring all of your, your tools, bring all of your, you know, whatever you're, you're working with. And then either, you know, under your boat in the, uh, in the space that the cradle makes or bring it home with you, um, and preferably bringing it home with you. Um, Certainly be aware of what you're doing. Uh, you know, don't bring in sandblasting equipment. You can't do that in the yard. Um, and yes, we've had people try uh, and ask, um, but you know, we're all going to paint the bottoms of our boats. We're all going to do, you know, we're all going to polish, but just be, you know, kind of aware in terms of the work that you're doing and how that affects the people around you. Um, when you come in, make sure the main gauge shuts behind you. That's just for protection and safety. Um, there, you know, annually we've been modifying and, and trying out different seasonal yard vehicle restrictions. I think we've, we've kind of landed on one that makes sense now, but that may change. And so just be aware of that. Um, when you're parking, a lot of people come in and they park their cars, um, you know, and, and go work on their boats as much as possible and, and realize it not, it's not always possible. Bring your car in, pull all the stuff out that you need, and then go park in, in the designated parking spots outside of the yard. Don't block any roadways or crane areas. We've had situations where, you know, you've got boats that'll, uh, or cars that will, you know, end up blocking, 
um, the, uh, sorry, it's, it's blocked by something else, but, you know, blocking the crane ways. And so, you know, that's not helpful. And we're trying to find the owner of a car, who knows who it is, uh, and somebody's not going to be able to launch their boat as a result of it. So just be respectful, you know, in the same way as, as you know, you respect, uh, as we were saying before, when you're working, just be respectful of where you put your car and, and where you park. Um, vehicle speed limit, uh, 10 kilometers is probably already too much, but keep it down as, as slow as possible. Um, I, somebody made a comment of, if you're rushing to get to your boat, you probably left too late. And that's not everybody else's problem. So, um, so keep your vehicles uh, slow. And for trailers, get them out of the yard once your boat is launched, right? Unless you're a trailer launch, obviously, or a dry sail, um, the goal is get them out of the yard. Any other things, uh, James? Nope, for that? That's for rules. That's tons for tonight. Cool. Dingy area. Over to you. Dingy area, or coining the new the park. Um, this is the area for dry sail boats, dinghies, skiffs, catamarans, lasers. Um, space is also, we're working on space available for canoes and kayaks. Uh, tie downs are provided for all the spots and they are numbered so you can tie your boats down. Um, there's two sets of ramps um, either side of the sailing school. Um, the ramps are hand launch only. Um, please do not use vehicles. The bottom half of the ramps are gravel and if you spin a tire you start digging holes and then it just makes it horrible for any, the next person trying to hand bomb the boat down. There is a winch on the west ramp. Um, it's usually up and running sort of same time that the digging park is open. There is a rope that goes with it and it's usually stashed underneath the cover. If anyone needs uh, a quick lesson on how to use it, reach out to myself or there's other key members in the, in the, in the park area that will be more than willing to help out with that. And I can put you in touch. Uh, there's washrooms and change rooms on the west side of the sailing school. There's power and water. Um, we don't provide hoses. Uh, we keep hoses for cleaning hoses on the, on the service docks, but the club doesn't provide hoses out in the yard. Um, and vehicles in the dinghy park, if you're, if you're going to a regatta or something, yes, but just be very cognizant of the school. Uh, you've got multiple kids under the age of 15 that they don't even know where they are most times and they don't, they don't realize <laughs> that there's a moving vehicle that could be in the middle of their sailing school day. So we're trying very hard to keep all vehicles out of that area just, just for everyone's peace of mind. But if you do need in or you're moving a boat, that's fine. Try and do it off hours. And uh, if you really need to get out, let me know and I can go in with the tractor and we can grab stuff. That's easy peasy. Perfect. I see a lot of stuff going on in the chat here. I'm not, uh, I see Corey answering a bunch of questions. That's fantastic. You can keep doing that, Corey. Um, would appreciate it. Um, we will get to any questions that you have, though. Promise we have enough uh, beer and rum. We can stay here as long as we need to. Um, so service docs. Um, so a couple of great links there. Again, we'll put those in the, uh, in the YouTube. Um, you know, this is, again, one of the great sort of values that we have at the club is we've got these service docs um, and there's um, again rules depending on which service dock you're at, uh, what you can do. There's actually signs posted in front of each of the slips. Um, so whether you're there to pump out or put ga gas in your engine or, or you know, re refill your diesel tank, or you, know, if you, you may have to do some repairs and you may need to be there for a longer period of time. All of that is allowed. It just, you just need to understand which, which slip to go to. And in some cases, if you're going to be there for a longer period of time, let the uh, let the office know. So the time limit for most service docs, if you're not going to be there for a longer period of time because you're doing repairs, is two hours. So that gives you time to you know clean the boat, pump, do a pump out, uh, fill up your your gas. Um, and again, you know, in terms of the gas, so you can fill gas or diesel uh, with tanks. We don't have a pump. Um, so for especially for new members, uh, if you have a large inboard onboard tank that you want to fill up. Uh, with diesel or uh, just uh, regular petrol, either at BYC, so Britannia Yacht Club, or Porta Call Marina, which is further upriver. And they have a fry stand there now, too. And they have a fry stand, so uh, bonus. It's worth um, a trip. And uh, obviously, no smoking, no open fire, no ignition, st ignition sources. Um, just because you're at the service dock doesn't mean you can do any of those things that James was talking about before. You can't pump out your bilge if it's got oil in it. You can't do any of that. You can't pump out the adding freeze because you're in the service dock it's the same harbor. Um, so all the same rules apply when you're, when you're there. 
what we do allow there, though obviously different than at your slip, is the refilling, re refueling of, of the boat. One of the things we have at the um, at the service docks, though, is a pump out and a water supply. So pump out for your uh, black water um, and uh, don't have an, a, an instruction on that, but there's typically enough people around that can show you how to work it. Um, you shouldn't get yourself into too much trouble. It only sucks. It doesn't blow. So the good news is, you know, you won't get yourself in too much of a, of a mess. Um, but again, this is one of those areas where, you know, on that previous slide, don't be afraid to ask. There's somebody around that's used that pump out and certainly will be able to help. Um, there's two, you'll see two different kinds of water um, and you'll see in the picture here, um, two different kinds of water sources. One is river water, one is fresh water. So the river water, use that to clean your boat, uh, clean things off and so forth. Um, you know, refill, um, you know, put some water into your black water tank if, if that's uh, if that's what you want to do. The fresh water, that's city water. So for your fresh water tanks on board, and so forth. Uh, don't mix them up, obviously, and don't use the fresh water for, to clean your boat. Uh, the river water is good enough for that. It's filtered. It's not, you know, it's not direct. So, um, you know, you're going to get clean water coming out of that. Make sure your vent lines are clear on your boats when you do the pump out. That's will, that will cause a problem and will make a mess if that's not uh, if that's not done. So, make sure in the spring when you when you're uh, you know getting the boat ready to get in the water. Uh, you you uh, check out those uh, those vent lines, get the spider uh, webs out of there and birds nests and hopefully not birds nests, that's pretty small, but uh, all kinds of other stuff that you can get out of there. And one last thing, which is again, maybe a little bit obvious, but probably worth saying, don't put any hose ends into the pump out fitting. So a lot of people are kind of like, they'll put the, you know, I'll, I'll put some clean water or some river water, even river water into the pump out fittings on your boat. Don't put it in hold it above and, and you know, hover it above that, uh, above that opening. Anything else in the service docks? No you've, you've, seen, you've, seen, you've seen a lot of stuff happen on those service docks. We won't get into, you know. All right, boop, there I was, stories. But if you need a run through, you're not sure, come to the office, find myself, find a bosun, uh, another, uh, another member, and ask the question before you come over with your boat. We'll come down, I'll show you how to do it. It's real. It's a, it's a simple process. It smells bad, but it's a simple process and it's, it's easy to figure and it's easy to show you how to do it. We could probably give them Corey's personal phone number. Like if anybody's having any problems, they can well, I call heard, I heard David Bradley was doing a video on it. So oh, okay. that should hopefully well, be posted. One or the other, one or the other. Um, cranes, over to you. And do you need a refill? Sure. Okay. You talking about cranes, I'll get your refill. We have uh, two fitted cranes in the harbor. Uh, you'll hear them called the South Crane and the North Crane. It's just basically geographically where they're located. Um, one of them has a power lift and rotate and the other is manual by pulling on the ropes. Both of them are a max 10,000 pounds boat lift capacity. Um, the one thing about the power crane on the North Crane well, don't over rotate it past the close end of the well. It will hit a hard stop and won't move again. We have put some limit switches in, but it's just hard on the system. It's only meant to swing out towards the harbor and back onto the crane pad and then back around. They're not meant to, to spin all the way around. Um, if you need help, please accept help. If somebody is coming by, uh, you need to book the crane through the online portal and everyone needs to do the crane training, uh, usually organized by park. Uh, before they are allowed to use the cranes at the club. And there's just, there's other things too. Make sure you got enough people, make sure it's not too windy. If you're not comfortable using the cranes, please reach out to the club or reach out to one of the service providers, Doug or Jay, and I'm sure they would be happy to launch your boat for you. Awesome. You're all, you're all set with a new, uh, new beer. Perfect. And you'll see 10,000 pounds on here. Really important number. We'll talk about that when we, in a couple of slides here. We talk about launch and haul out. That's the max li limit. So if, you're, if your boat's above, above 10,000, uh, your decision is kind of made for you in terms of how you're going to get in and out of the harbor. Um, if you're under 10,000, you've got some options. So we'll, uh, we'll talk to that in a few, um, in a few slides. Um, Again, another unfortunate um, site. This is one of the one of the floods, 2019, 18, Most maybe. Recent one. Yeah. Yeah, and that's how not to treat a crane. Um, it, you should not see the water that high. 
uh, it makes launching uh, incredibly easy. A couple of more feet and we'll get that uh, CNC 27 or whatever up, launched uh, without the crane. Um, but hopefully we don't see that again this year. Um, the Annex, simple yeah. one. The Annex. We love the Annex. It's the white building with the wooden flat roof that's beside the clubhouse. I don't know why we don't have it. We should have a picture of it. Oh. We should. We should. Okay. Um, it is a garage slash storage slash member accessible slash everything under the sun building. Um, I've been working in the last couple of years to give it a bit of a facelift. Uh, you'll notice this summer if you come by, there has been some upgrades to the inside. Everything's on wheels, new shelving, new organization for tools. There's also some storage on the, on the garages on the one side. There's a storage for the race shed, for the Able Sales, where we keep uh, all of our yard equipment. Um, generally during the week, the annex is open. Uh, there'll be a access for members for the drill press and basic tools. If you forget something at home, you forget the drill or the 10 mil socket, please come and borrow one, but it's a borrow. They need to come back. Um, but we are not, uh, we're not the channeling. There, there's stuff there for you to borrow and use if you had the oh, crap moment and you live in Orleans and you forgot the 10 mil at home. But if you need 52 screws, please head to a local store to, to purchase. Um, if you have any questions, there's usually a pretty good crowd that hangs around the annex that can answer most voting query questions of how do I do this? Because this is broken. Yeah, and that's one of, the, one of the benefits of being a club, right? So we've got these facilities available to us, whether it's the, the yard, the harbor, the annex, the fact that we've got some tools, some, some you know, there's, there's always bits and bobs of wood and, and pieces of metal in there. And of course, as a club, you know, that, that, that's something that you can use, but as a club, you also have to respect it and think that there's, you know, 1900 other members that may want to use that same thing that may need that same tool that may need that same piece. So, um, you know, if, if you borrow something or you lose and it drops in the, in the, in the Harbor, that happens once in a while, um, replace it. You know, uh, that's, that's the whole, the whole concept of us being a club. And I think, uh, I think everybody, you know, here knows that, but really, really worth, uh, worth mentioning. Keelboat, uh, launch and haul out. So get into a little bit of some of the options that you have, and this will get to a little bit of that 10,000 uh, pound limit that I was talking about. So we have a club launch uh, organized by the Harbor Committee team. I'm one of the um, crane uh, chiefs, uh, Ken Pohl. You may know that guy. Maybe. Um, one of the other crane chiefs, um, and it's organized by Randy Wiseman, who's also on the Harbor Committee. So this is where we bring in, you see the pictures there, two commercial cranes. Um, and we put in anywhere between 80 and 100 boats. I think um, in the heyday, I've done this for over a decade. I think we've done... Most was around 110 boats. Uh, we're down to about 80 or so boats. Um, so with going in with the organized club launch, you go in on a specific date. In this case, for 2022, it's the 7th of May. And you come out on a specific date, 22nd of October. Um, all boats that are over 10,000 pounds, this is your only option, unless you uh, choose to bring in your own crane and launch your own boat. Uh, in which case, congratulations, that's, a, you know, you, you have an awful lot of money to be able to do that. Um, but this is a way to get your, 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 your plus your 10,000 plus pound boat into the water. We do have a lot of boats, though, that are under 10,000 pounds that use this as an option. Um, and I would say probably uh, about three quarters of the boats that are part of that club launch are under the 10,000 pound range. So don't think that that's sort of the, the, the limit. Um, you can absolutely use that service. What it does mean, though, is your boat is in a specific spot um, for the uh, for the winter, and it's right near the walls where you can see those uh, those boats uh, in the picture. Alternatively, um, if your boat is sitting on a cradle, uh, you're under ten thousand pounds. Doug Patterson, Jay Morden, I think their information is on the website uh, in terms of how to get in touch with them. They can help launch and haul out your boat, and they can they provide. So they is what we we've talked about service providers over the night over the evening. Um, you know, they can provide a variety of services of simply, you know, taking your boat from wherever it's sitting in the yard, moving it to the, to the uh, crane, putting it in the water, and then they're done. Or they can also put up your mast and they can also clean your boat in the winter or in the, uh, in the fall when you pull it out. So there's a whole bunch of services. You can talk to either Doug or Jay. 
both fantastic. They've been around for years and decades in, 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 actually in both cases, know the club super well, know most of the boats really well. And so that's an option that, uh, that you can use. There's also a member cooperative. So if your boat is on a, a trailer uh, and you want to go in uh, you know, yourself, but don't feel maybe necessarily able to do it yourself, uh, Aaron O'Connor, Kim McDonald have a trailer co-op launch group that they've set up where they get people, you know, you get a five or six boats in a day or maybe 10 boats in a day and uh, you all help each other. Um, and then Park Davis, uh, who, uh, as Stephen mentioned, is one of the, uh, key, the key members for the uh, speaker series. He actually has a masting co-op. So if you put your boat in and you just want to get over to your slip and kind of get organized and then have a mast, uh, put your mast up. He's got a, a group of people that he gets together to do that. And then the last option, which is a lot of people do this, you have a trailer, you can either use the club crane. And again, back to James's point, you know, you have to get the training on that or the public launch ramp that's on the other side of the, uh, the harbor. Um, you want to talk about mass? Yeah, sure. Uh, mass stepping and taking down, it's the other, the other part of launching your boat. Um, half hour generally is what we ask people to book on the crane for this process. And again, you can have Doug or Jay do it for you after they launch or take out your boat. Um, the co-op group of volunteers, Park Davis and his uh, his crowd of, uh, do we call them cronies? Wow. Well, not yet, yeah, Experienced cronies. Experienced cronies, <laughs> perfect. Um, they do, uh, I think they have two days booked out now and there's about 20 guys or 20 boats that they just all get together and, and do it as a team. And of course, do it yourself. Um, but you do need three to four people well depending on the size of boat 10 yeah. or 22 not so bad but larger boat more people cnc 29 i can tell you you, you need a few you need a few people yeah and there's usually a few people kicking around but you want to make sure you've got you know a, a team of people and you have to book the crane that's really important because again like i said you'd be disappointed if you just try, you think you're going to drive up and, and use the crane on the trailer launch and haul out um again you know, Aaron O'Connor, Kim McDonald could speak on this. They could actually probably give a whole speaker series on how they do this, run by volunteers. It happens the week before uh, club launch. Uh, so the 30th of April this year. And uh, so that's for going in and for coming out 29th of October, uh, a week after our uh, club launch. The, this, is, this has become key to part of the shuffle in the spring and fall of the year is this trailer launch uh, group of people their boats get stored in the empty crane alleys from the club launch, commercial launch. So their boats all fill this void the week after or the week before, and then it allows us to get the commercial cranes in and out. So you'll also see the week, the work week after they go in or the work week before they come out, you'll see a strategically placed boat across these empty spaces. It's because we've opened them up to bring the cranes in. So we're, we're quietly suggesting people not park back in those spots. Yeah, and that's a great uh, great segue. And, and just last two points here, and I'll go exactly to that point. Um, you know, we have we have a club tractor, certified volunteers know how to, how to drive that, how to work it. So they're actually on deck uh, to help out with the trailer launch. And, but any member who wants to just join and use uh, the volunteer, you know, to, to help out with the, the launch and haul-out co-op, even if you don't have a boat uh, in, in the uh, trailer launch or, or haul-out, Go ahead and do it. I, I've actually never used the club launch, um, and I've been, you know, working on the the cranes there for over a decade. Um, I, I, I you know, when I had a boat, I'm between boats. I think most people saw that on my uh, little bio. Um, you know, I would go out with uh, with Doug uh, and in with Doug, but I loved working and volunteering on the uh, on the uh, club launch. So you don't have to have a boat in in sort of the the uh, the work that you're doing to actually uh, to be a volunteer in that space. James just talked about a really important piece though around, you know, spring and fall is a really, really busy period in the yard. And it's, it's a semi chaotic, but very well organized ballet of movement. And so, you know, we, even tonight, we're able to say what day we're bringing in the commercial cranes to do the club launch, when we're doing that in the fall to, to pull the boats out, what happens with the trailer launch, what happened when the dinghy park can open. This is because of years of experience with, with uh, the volunteers, with the Harbor Committee, and you know, making sure that we can get people into their boats as quickly as possible and making sure that we maintain the safety in the yard and use the yard as effectively as possible. But the, the, the real goal is to get as many people into their boats as early as possible. And so you know, that changes a little bit every year with when does the harbor open, when does the ice go away? 
and we think we've got it, you know, pretty good. You know, people will always want to be in an extra week, a little bit longer for the club launch cranes or get into the water, you know, a little bit earlier. Um, but there's a, you know, it's not simply a one event move. It's, it's actually a whole, like, it's, it's, it's almost like Jenga. Um, so in terms of spring, which we're coming up to, like I said, it's a bit, you know, it's a bit of a ballet. Make sure you, you pay attention to those vehicle restrictions. Um, tarps and boat covers, you know, they'll, they'll start coming off, uh, maybe not soon, but maybe in a couple of weeks. Um, if, if it's old and you don't need any more, donate it to bring on the bay. Sure, Park will be wanting them this year with the swim. Uh, they use them to stop the uh, swimmers' feet from getting destroyed by gravel before they hit the water. Please, no tarps in the club's dumpsters. They just take up a volume of room and then everyone leaves the garbage beside the dumpster because there's no room in the dumpster. Yeah. Take them home, dispose of them as best you can. Um, I'd love to have a better way of disposing tarps, but at this point in time, there just, there just isn't. Yeah. Um, sorry, and I just realized the picture cut off the last one. Be curious the power and water. So you'll see there's power and water stations, as, as uh, James mentioned, in the yard, uh, sort of strewn about. Um, you know, it, use, use the power when you need it. When you don't unplug and leave uh, someone else, there's not sort of infinite uh, plugs at each of these stations. And same with water. You know, if you're going to use water, um, bring your hose. Uh, there won't be hoses there, but bring your hose, hook it up, um, you know, do what you need to do. And then uh, take your hose off so that the next uh, the next member can use it. Um, remove your sorry the water in the yard at all the pedestals is city water. Oh right, good point. So the the only the only non potable water in the whole club is at the service docks. Everything else is potable city water. And the the the, the water in the yard gets turned on about when is there's kind of some is there, is there as soon as uh, as soon as the the risk of the lines freezing is gone. I'll have the water up and running. Awesome. And same in the fall. As soon as, as soon as we get to the point where we're going to lose lines in the ground, I have to shut the water down. Makes sense. Um, do the same thing if you have a water sprinkler in your, in your yeah, yard, right? Same, same, same idea. Same idea. Yeah. Um, remove antifreeze from your engine before launch. Really important. So this goes back to, you know, no contaminants in the water. Um, you know, put a bucket on the end of your, uh, your exhaust, uh, run your engine, run some water through it. Uh, when you don't see pink anymore and you've captured all that pink in your bucket, uh, bring it to the you're bins. You're good to go and bring it to the bins. Don't yeah. just, don't go, oh, that's awesome. And then dump it on the ground. That's not helpful. Um, and so, so bring it over to the bins. We've got a waste deposit area over near the annex. Uh, the, well, the antifreeze is by the pump house shack. You'll see it labeled in the spring. It'll be set up. There's actually Home Depot style buckets there and waiting for you. And there's the big blue barrel with a funnel. You can pour it all in and we, dispose of it when it's full. Couldn't. If you see it full, again, I, there's there's four of us working in the yard and a million, it feels like a million members. <laughs> hey James, I noticed the barrel's full. Awesome, thank you. Um, stuff like that, it's a two-way street, it works really good. Perfect. Um, Harbor Master, and I know he's online, I think he's online, he's gonna hate this, but I, I, there's a bunch of pictures of you, Corey, I could have put up, but you know, there you go. So this is our Harbor Master, Corey Glynn, uh, former Commodore Harbor, Harbor Master, uh, all around great guy and a uh, personal friend of both of us. So um, we're pleased to have him uh, leading the charge. Um, he runs the Harbor Committee. And so, as I mentioned, I'm a member of the Harbor Committee, so is James. Uh, I think there's probably about 15 or so of us on there. Um, and, you know, we kind of help put some of these you know, rules and some of these uh, activities together. Uh, Ken Pohl is our secretary. We meet about six times a year. We look at, you know, we set the dates. We look at the club launch, the yard management, um, you know, any revisions to the harbor policy, because as we evolve as a club, some of those things need to change. Um, we support obviously a lot of the, the maintenance and volunteer activities. And we implement a lot of the major projects. So the dock top replacement was done largely on the back of uh, the members and certainly a, a significant uh, contingent of the Harbor Committee. If you're interested in joining the Harbor Committee, send the guy uh, on the right side of your screen an email. Uh, I think it's rearcommodore at nsc.ca. Uh, last couple of slides, folks, and then we'll stop talking and turn it over to you for um, questions. You wanna talk about mooring allocations? Sure, mooring allocations committee, Mac. Uh, our chair is Bruce McDonald. Uh, Co-chair is uh, Michael Lee. 
And uh, DMAC, which is Dingy Morning Allocations, is Brent Benninger. Uh, the aim of this, or of these committees, is to make sure that everyone gets the correct slip for the size of their boat or the use of their boat. And it's done on a committee level, and there is a set of rules, and there's a point system that everybody gets into. And it, we try and make it, and it is made as fair as possible to everybody. It's not one person that makes the decisions. Um, we meet twice a year. Um, the next one coming up, now that uh, everyone's bills have gone out, I'm sure everyone's paid their morning fees. We will uh, sit in March and finalize the placements for this year. Um, there are the, the published assignments are published three weeks before club launch. Jamie in the office does not know, cannot say, what your mooring is tomorrow. Um, we will publish it. It will go out on the member side of the website and I'm sure there will be a whole bunch of, hey, it's published going out on the website. Um, the big reiteration is the slip belongs to the club. It doesn't go with your boat. Um, if we need to shuffle somebody left or right, you might not be in the same spot next year, but we try our best to keep you in the water. Um, if you need a change, there is a mooring change request. It's a piece of paper that gets filled out and handed into Jamie in the office, which hits the binder. Everything's dated. Your member points are taken into consideration and we try and accommodate people as, as best we can. There can be a wait list this year. I think we are at 17. Um, so it all depends on where you sit on the wait list and how many people don't go in. And then we play the whole shuffle of, of moorings again this spring. Yeah, that, that happens to me. I know some people think they, they can sort of, you know, pull up to the club in, in June. Uh, you know, they got their uh, CNC 27 behind their truck and they go, hi, I'm here. I'd love to have a slip. I've been, you know, a, a crewing member for the last 20 years. Um, where can I put my boat? There, if there's a waiting list and the harbor is full, the answer is you're on the waiting list. And, it, and even though, you know, it, it works by points in terms of how many points you get as a, as a member and, and where, you, where you sit in terms of the ability to, um, to, to get a, to, to get a, to take, yeah, to get your, your, your request addressed. Um, but it's not as simple as pulling in and, uh, and, and hopping into the harbor. So, um, and this is again, a very well, uh, well worked out process that we've, uh, we've done through the, uh, through the decades. Last slide uh, on volunteering. Um, lots of volunteering um, opportunities. We are a club, a very, you know, we, Corey and I have often had this debate. And if you come into the uh, clubhouse on uh, on a given weekend, we're probably sitting at a bar, at one of the tables having this, this discussion around a club or a marina, and we are a club, there's no question. Um, you can volunteer and, you know, again, I certainly encourage all of you to, to reach out and, and say, I'd love to get involved. And we'll, we'll place you in some of the different volunteer activities, club launch, dock top, oh, that's mostly done, happily. Uh, cradle removal, we have to remove all those cradles um, from the, those boats from club launch. Yard cleanup, um, there's always work to be done there. Dinghy park setup, general work parties. There's always, you know, park does a great job of looking at different things that need to be done. Sometimes it's cleaning up some of the, uh, the weeds and so forth that are on the side of the, uh, the yard. Other times it's putting up awnings and so forth. And so we're always looking for new people to help out. And the Harbor Committee is always looking for new people. So approach Corey or, uh, you know, you can raise your interest tonight. And with that, I think I, we'll uh, just one thing on volunteering. Yes, we're talking about the Harbor and the yard right now in this presentation. And Corey's probably going, James, stop, stop, stop. I want all the volunteers for myself. But we are a volunteer based club. If you're not comfortable swinging a hammer or putting boats in out of the water or those types of jobs that you're seeing on the screen. There are many, 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 many other ways of volunteering at the club, whether it's planning parties, uh, PR, working on a website, uh, the, the great guys that are running these shows tonight. Um, there, there's, there's so many avenues to volunteer and it's not just the Harbor, but we'll recruit Harbor whenever we can. Well said. And so that brings us full circle. Um, and so I didn't, so Corey's picture was in here. His picture was in here. Mine wasn't, but I get to race on that boat on every Tuesday night. And I think that's a pretty cool thing. So that's my picture. And with that, uh, Stephen, I'll turn it back to you and I'll let you uh, run the question and answer 
Although Corey, I think has answered all the questions. So what, we just sign off and go our merry way or what do we do here? Exactly, thanks very much, Corey. Uh, I think we'll run through uh, some of them just so everybody can hear because I think a lot of them are, are very um, relevant and would fill in some gaps. Some things you've already, you guys have already touched on, but maybe a couple of things bear emphasis. So um, let me see. Uh, so here's uh, somebody asked, where do I empty or pump out my bilge? So just you commented on that, but just to be clear. Uh, the best place to empty or pump out your bilge is onshore into a bucket. Um, if it is really oily waste, we have containers for that over by the annex. There is a, a used oil container and a used gas container. If it's predominantly water, I would suggest trying to separate it as best as you can, just so the barrels don't fill Use up. Those yeah. And then uh, if, if you have any trouble with that, there's a, there's a big giant plastic shed, yellow in color, that has the barrels clearly marked in it, and you can dump the used hydrocarbon uh, into those barrels. And yeah, and, and to be clear, I mean, you can empty your bilge. Like if, you, if your bilge is full of water, you empty your bilge into the harbor. There's no problem. It's just if it has contaminants in it, then you want to be a little bit more uh, wary of what you're doing. Right. Okay. Great. Thanks. Uh, there was a question about managing eddy freeze. I think you commented on that thoroughly. Um, that is caught coming out of the boat, boat and poured into the receptacle in the yard. So I think. Uh, if somebody isn't clear on that, they can ask another question. Um, all right. Um, so, where can you plug in to charge onboard batteries? Service dock. Um, there is there is power at the service dock, and what we call F dock, which is the piece of dock that is, if you look straight down from our beautiful deck, you'll see F dock. It's the piece at the front dock, F dock. Um, that's generally where we encourage people for longer stays. And if you are there overnight to charge your batteries or it's going to take 24 hours, please, uh, please just pop your head into the office. I know it's been difficult with COVID. You got to bang on the back window. Hopefully those restrictions are lifting and the building will open up. Just come into the office and say, Hey, this is my boat. I'm going to be there overnight. And generally it's not a problem. We... We will put in restrictions for weekends like uh, Nod when we have 50 extra boats trying to tie up in the harbor. If you ask to come in and start cutting your deck apart that weekend, I'll probably ask you to take a different weekend to do that work. But I'll also give you a reason why. Hopefully that answers that. You mean reasonable? Yeah. Some days, some oh, days. Okay, that's new. <laughs> so I passed on a question that somebody uh, asked yeah. Um, and that is, um, there was a question about using the pressure, using pressure washers at the service dock. And I facetiously asked, can you do that any time of day or night? <laughs> yes, but be very respectful of your other members. And I'll put it at this. If you're sitting up on the deck on a Friday night and it's four o'clock and you've just sat down and you've had your first cold beverage and the food is coming out to your table, the last thing you want to hear is someone riding up a gold two-stroke gas-operated pressure washer. There's no rules in place that say that you can't do it. Um, it it's respect. Try and do it at a time. The best time to do it is when the bar is not open. Um, Friday at four o'clock is really not the best time to pressure wash your boat. And and I think you know when when it's when it's launch time. Um, and all the boats are going in and you're, you know, everybody, everybody knows that first weekend, everybody's just want to get the boats cleaned up, get the mast up, get the sails on and, 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 and hit the river. You know, people, if there's more noise those weekends, and again, it's, it's respect. It's kind of like if you were on the other end of the, or the receiving end of that, you kind of go, yeah, that makes sense. Um, but it doesn't make sense in June or July or August when uh you know people are enjoying the, the 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 facilities that we have whether that's on your boat or on the uh or on the deck great did we convince you Stephen? i'm not sure i'm not sure we convinced you you did you did you did <laughs> i'm listening and reading at the same time here. yeah i know i know it's not easy 
All right. Uh, We're taking a look right. at the so same a, a, couple, a couple questions to the harbor and navigating the harbor. Um, whoops, sorry, that just slipped down. I have my basic cruising standard. Can I sail my keelboat in the harbor? Sure. Ron, Ron, shoot. Are you serious? Really? <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. There is no rule against sailing a boat in the PN Sailing Club's harbor. All I ask is respect. If you don't feel confident, your engine has broken down, use the emergency dock. That's why it's there. Um, if you are confident, but you can't get to the bottom side of D, sail up between A and W and tie up at the service dock. Um, if you really want to sail in and out of the harbor, Fill your boots, but just remember that it is restricted waters and yes, sail has to, or power has to give way to sail, but everyone's operating in restricted waters. So those rules tend to get a little clouded and be careful of what you're doing. Yeah, all the call regs still, are, still apply, right? So if, if you if you have the ability to do it, um, and we we know there's a bunch of uh, especially at regattas. I mean, there's there, you know especially when we when we have regattas. I think of the Viper fleet. You know the yeah. the Viper fleet that's up near the uh, near the clubhouse. They all sail out, uh, and they can absolutely do that. And you know they know how to give way and make way. Um, it works um, if you if you're if you're thinking about hey maybe this would be a cool thing to do. Um, maybe think twice about that and and yeah motor in. Thanks, guys. So here's a question related uh, somewhat to the emergency dock. You mentioned that if we need help, including towing from staff, to ask, are staff available after 5 p.m. and on weekends? In a perfect world, yes. Um, the staff is not allowed to operate powerboat for towing outside of the harbor mouth. Inside of the harbor, we can assist. But you'll have to remember that sometimes the bosons that are on after five and on weekends are 15 years old and it's their first summer working at the club. And I don't expect them to feel 100% confident towing a 30 foot boat through the harbor. Um, if I'm around, uh, if you know John Gardner, our head rice boson, um, Sean, our sailing manager, uh, he's gonna love me for tagging him on that one. Uh, there's lots of other people that can help and Members can use the little powerboat in the harbor to help another member to get to their slip if they want. Just again, hey, I want to do this. No problem. Go and do it. Availability outside of office hours is hit and miss. That's that's just that I, I can't I can't staff the club to have a crew of three to help tow and keep your costs down to where we are a, a viable club. But again, as a club, I mean, you know, to, to what we were talking about. There's always members around and again, ask. And there's probably going to be at any given point in time, certainly during the summer and now that we're done, kind of we're almost done with COVID, um, you know, a dozen members that would easily be able to be, you know, able to and skilled enough to hop in a boat and, and be able to help out and would. Yeah. And our club has a, a culture of being super helpful. So never hesitate to ask like you've been emphasizing. People are super helpful, always well, willing to jump in. Absolutely. I mean, I, I had one time, I remember, you know, uh, with uh, our first boat back in 2005, uh, I got stuck in the harbor, the, or sorry, in the, in the channel, uh, motor, motor conked out and ended up just doing, you know, circles with, with a little bit of sail out. And I don't know, three or four boats came out and said, you know, can we help you? And of course, my ego was taking over and I was going to try to get that Yamaha 9.9 .9 started. And after about 150 pulls, it finally started and we were able to get to our slip. But there were, you know, everybody that went by was like, can we give you a hand? And to, Stephen, you're absolutely right. Like that's, that is the culture of the club. Great. You spoke about the no wake rule near the Able Sail Dock. Well, actually it's around the whole harbor. How do we as a club manage the people coming from the public ramp? Uh, often very fast and detrimental to dinghies and larger boats. You'll see speed boats coming by. I'm, I'm at W36 right by the emergency dock and our boats are rocking, you know? Yeah. Um, 
We have Just signs. Oh, you, we have, you Bob or Doug McKenzie? Which which one of the brothers are you? No, you I don't know. It's all you. The best way I found of handling that is a phone call to the local police department that has their marine unit. Um, if if members are having a problem with a, a reoccurring problem with a boat operator, don't be afraid to snap a picture if you can get the boat numbers on it. I know Peter Wood has definitely sent me a lot from his dealings out the end of W and I don't, and I don't mind it. I am quite happy. I have a, I have a direct line in with the Sergeant of the detachment. And uh, we've had uh, a couple of people last summer had uh, visits and talks about how they operate their boat. Um, but again, it is a public launch ramp, And the only thing you need to operate a boat is your operator's card and enough money to buy a boat. So you can educate and you can enforce. And as members of the club, education we can do, enforcement we can't. We have to turn that over to the enforcement authorities. And like I said, I, I have a really good working relationship with the mobile force. So if you have any concerns, please, again, reach out, let me know, send me an email with a picture and I'll get it right off to them because they love that stuff. It gives, it justifies their jobs too, right? Yeah, I would say, I would say don't take it into your own hands. Like, don't, don't get into an, a, an individual altercation. Um, you know, that's likely not going to land well. Um, and so, yeah, just, you know, bring it to the next level and, and let the, uh, the uh, appropriate authorities take care of it. Okay, thanks. Uh, also to uh, something near the Able Sail dock. So this is a comment that somebody put in, Linda. Uh, thrilled to see the emergency sign, the emergency sign on the Able Sail dock. I was one who needed it and tried to get to my slip and had to tie up to a neighbor. The new sign is obvious and appreciated. So that's great feedback. Perfect. Any restrictions back to the yard in working on your boat in the spring, sanding, grinding, etc. And is there a time limit to launch from a cradle? Um, yes, there are restrictions, and yes, there's time limits depending on how you put your boat in. Um, any working on the bottom of your boat, you should be doing everything in your power to collect and dispose of whatever waste you're making, whether it's tarping the boat off, putting a tarp on the ground, using vacuum cleaners with filters to... But boat bottom materials are horrible for the environment. We all know that, but it's one of those necessary evils that we use to preserve the life of our boats. Let's not put them back into the environment where they shouldn't be. Um, dispose of them properly, um, and you also have to remember that the guy beside you might have just done the bright work on this boat. And if you start standing blue bottom paint, they're not going to be happy. So again, respect and the environment is the big thing. There are no sandblasting in the yard because there's just no way to contain that. As to limits on how long you can work on your boat, if you're with the club launch on a cradle, you're stuck to those dates. That's, that's it. Um, if you're front and center, because you told Doug and Jay that you were last out and you were going to go first thing in the spring and you decide to redo your bottom, they'll probably not appreciate having to move you eight times so that they can get to everybody else's boat and they might charge you extra. But that's out of the club's hands. Um, the club does have a rule, though, if, uh, if you don't want to go in, you can have two years on the hard in seven before you so two years up on the hard to work on your boat go on deployment whatever the case may be um and then after those two years you have to occupy your slip or the boat has to leave the yard and then you you have to be in the water for seven years before those two years reapply hopefully that answers that question in a long-winded answer <laughs> no i think that's great uh thanks you know, related to painting boats in the spring, uh, you and I talked last spring about this, the road and people driving through the yard quickly. Yes, we got calcium dump last year. And uh, from what I heard from people, everyone really appreciated it. So uh, much. Uh, Corey's budget approvals, we will be doing the same again this year. We will get the uh, calcium truck to spray the gravel. And Great. again, members respect 
keep the speed down in the air. Yeah, nobody got, likes dust we got, floating we got, into the freshly painted hull. We got a smiley face from Corey, so I think that's an approval. I, I'm not sure, but I think in, in government in government terms, when you get a smiley face, that means that you're approved. So, and and just on the on the sanding, yeah, I mean, you know, I've seen some boats where you know they tarp off the whole boat. You basically you know you start at the uh, the rub rail and you put you know uh, uh, plastic all around. Just be aware that you know winds are going to shift. You're going to be out there sanding, and yeah, you know it's the blue bottom coat stuff, and it's going everywhere. So you just again thinking about and respecting you know your 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 neighbors, um, and what's going to where your your sanding is going to affect them. Uh, just be you know keep that in mind. Question to uh, back to the harbor. If a boat is away from its slip for a couple of weeks for a regatta or whatever, would you like to know for visitors to use? Yes, for sure. Awesome. Let me know. We we tend. It's not ten. It's sorry. It's it's generally not visitors because we are landlocked at the rapids and the dam. Um, when that comes into play is for the regattas. regattas. Um, I'll be doing for, for not or one design in June, the week before I do a monster walk of the dock and find all the empty slips and call all the owners and say, Hey, are you planning to go in before this weekend? If not, can I use your slip for the regatta to put a boat in the regatta rules are boats have to be in the water for the weekend. They can't come out until the end of racing. So there are times, uh, a couple of years ago when we had the mobility cup, we asked a bunch of people on W Dock to move further into the harbor for the week that the able sailors were here. We do play a shuffle with it, um, but if you're if you're gone for a couple of weeks and you want to let the office know, please, that's awesome. Is there any way to get surety on trailer storage? Uh, Neil is asking, I bought my Hobie from a member with a dolly in the sup for the summer and road trailer for the winter, which hasn't been out of the yard in years, but each year I'm never sure if I'll be allowed to store the land trailer in the weeds at the east end of the park. Any suggestions? There, I, I honestly am drawing a blank on the grandfather date of trailers in the yard, but we are discouraging as a club the trailers in the yard, and I'm sure, Court, oh, thank you, 2008. 2008. Um, the empty trailers in the yard pose a huge problem to the volunteers getting the club, the club to get where it needs to be in three short weeks. Um, you'll see them stacked out on the lawn in the spring and fall as we need the space. You can always write a letter to the rear Commodore Harbor Master asking for special dispensation and it is up to the Harbor Master on a yearly basis to grant special dispensation to keep a trailer in the yard. But with, there is no long-term storage of trailers in the yard. Question regarding the annex, does it also have PFDs if you forgot one for a passenger? Um, no, the club does not keep uh, life jackets on hand, just a, a crazy liability issue. Um, I do have a couple kid ones that have been very gently used and kindly donated. But as as a general rule, as a general rule, no, we don't keep life jackets around the handout. Okay. Water in the yard. I know it depends on temperatures, but roughly what's the week or <laughs> they're gonna yeah, hold you to this. No, 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 date down. They're gonna, they're gonna say April 2nd and they're gonna you know write it down. Yeah. As soon as we're past minus five overnight temperatures, the yard will be up and running. Great. And the same thing applies for the for the, the for the harbor when well, the fall the, the opposite. But same thing for the harbor. A lot of people you know want to know, well, when's the harbor open? Like when can we actually start to put boats in and so forth? It it, it depends when the ice melts. Right. And so that's why I mean, you know, I joked before about when the ice actually drops in the harbor. Um, it, that's really our, our, our indicator. And so it, it's absolutely, you know, we're weather dependent on, on that entirely. Okay. Um, John is asking, and I, I don't know what this is in regard to anymore. Uh, what about the trailers, et cetera, parked on the lawn on the west side of the sailing center? 
Trailers parked on the lawn on the west. John, if you're still here, can you clarify in the Q&A? And then it, while he's doing that, if he's still here, um, question came up. Um, what is the proper etiquette or protocol to get through races out on Lac de Chen back to the club? I feel there is a need to perhaps communicate this to non-racers. Well, the racers won't like this answer because I'm not a racer. <laughs> Go ahead. We're all out there to share Lac de Chen. Yes, they're racing. Do your best to go to the stern of a racer. Um, you'll see people that just blow through the race course. But as you go out the harbor, you, you should be able to see where the fleets are. And if there's 20 boats going all the same direction on the same tack, go behind them. They're, they're not going to turn around and go backwards instantly. Um, and then get yourself through the race course. If you see club boats, um, I think all the club boats that do start and finishes are hugely labeled with Nepean Sailing Club down the side of them. They're generally the start and finish boats. Give them a wide berth. Um, and you can always power upwind and, and sail home if, it's, if you have a non-such, it's but, easy to do. But again, respect, right? But it is true. When, when you're out there, if you're a cruiser and you've never raced, you have no idea what a race course is. Is it you know, is a triangle? Is it a sauce? Like those things that racers understand they don't know, right? So for sure, you know, try, if you see a whole clump of boats, don't go through the middle of them. Um, probably not a good plan, both for you and them, because you're going to be trying to dodge them and they're going to be trying to dodge you. Um, as much as you can go outside within keeping, keeping within limits of, you know, not creating a, a problem for yourself, you know, hitting Blueberry Shoal or, or hitting Table Rock or any of those kind of things. Um, no hard and fast rule on, on, on race nights, because the race course has changed. You know, it would be it would be easy to say this is the race course every Tuesday night or Thursday night and avoid it if, you know, if you can, but they change. And so it's really, really difficult. Um, but I think, you know, James's point, um, you know, if you can find those boats that look like, you know, they're, they're not moving, they're anchored. Those are, those are, you know, committee boats. And if you go around the outside of those, you're probably going to be pretty safe. And Racing boats should all be flying a pennant, a colored pennant, and could, should be recognizable, though. Somewhere. Yeah, they should be flying a colored pennant on the uh, stern of the boat, generally on the uh, backstay of the boat. Yeah, but when you're out cruising, you're going out, you know, to and the barbecue, you just trying, the, you got the barbecue, you're going out to Aylmer Island for a little, you know, evening dinner and trying to figure out where the pennants are and which boat. Yeah, Go, try to go around the mass of boats is, is, is probably the safest, uh, the safest bet. Happy I made you laugh, Al. Okay, uh, Corey has answered John's question, but what it yeah. was was that cat sailors need lawn to raise their main sails. Trailers, et cetera, are often in the way to the trailers parked on the west side of the sailing center. So, so uh, Corey has said that uh, they're working on plans. Yes, there is a huge committee. There are lots of very smart people working on the park project. Um, I think everyone will be happy with the outcome. It won't be a this year outcome. There are a lot of key factors that we're going to be doing for this year to make improvements, and there will be a lot of improvements moving forward. Um, the problem with the lawns is it's a shared space. We, we are going to do some shuffling of the yard this spring or summer this year that will improve the space on the lawns. But, and I don't know if we can get grass to grow beside the sailing school with that many feet, but we will try. <laughs> and, and Stephen, just to, just to go back to the question about, you know, sailing through, um, you know, racing and so forth. Uh, I see here that um, it was during Nod. So not a weekend, yeah, that's a whole different kettle of fish because it's not just, you know, two race courses on a Tuesday night or on a Thursday night, not as all over the river, uh, you know, many, many uh, clubs participating on the river and many other boats uh, in from uh, outside uh, of Ottawa. And so it, it is a very, very different uh, sort of vibe that weekend. And if you navigated through uh, Nod, uh, you get a thumbs up uh, from the Harvard Committee. It's not an easy thing to do. Okay. 
Well, I think, oh, uh, here's one more that's come in. Where can I leave my hard tender if it won't fit in the slip with the mothership? Is there an option to pay for a space somewhere? There are tender racks. They are currently on the contested grassy area on the west side of, uh, of the sailing school. The plan, hopefully, with a whole bunch of volunteers is to relocate those racks as one of the improvements for the park. But yes, there are. Uh... Now, what about on the east side of W Duck? Yes. Is that a is that an acceptable area or not? Am I am I am I poking the bear here? Oh, big poke. Oh, um, it is not. Uh, in the actual written rules, the dinghies are supposed to go in your slip or on that one. Okay, uh, perfect. We have never policed the backside of W Dock, but with some of the changes coming and the use of club boats and stuff, some of that will change, um, just for the general use of for for everybody. But the rocks will will be there, still available, and uh, hopefully this summer we get them moved. Okay. All right. I think that's it. The last one we have is a is a suggestion for uh, information dissemination, um, spring and fall boat prep do's and don'ts. Um, and actually, uh, we do have a topic coming up on that in a couple of weeks on uh, boat maintenance. So that should be included in that. What to do before launch and haul out. All right, and with that, uh, I don't see any other questions that have come in. So thank you both very much. It was really informative, great job. Uh, I learned some things as well that were very helpful. So really appreciate the time you've taken to uh, prepare and present. Thanks guys very much. Thank you for having us. It was Thank great, you. great to be here. Well, oh, and uh, one thing I have to say is uh, in thank you, uh, we generally give our guest speakers one of these, uh, the Sweet. Nepean Sailing Club cap. Awesome. Or, or two. So uh, oh, you if you'd <laughs> like to drop in, you can pick one of those up from Jamie. Uh, at the <laughs> office. <laughs> Perfect. We'll do. All Thanks right. to you. Really appreciate it. Nice. Well, just to uh, remind everybody that next week uh, we're hearing from Michelle Simon on NSC's Able Sail Program Development Programs and uh, how that uh, came about and where we are and where we're going. So thank you everybody for attending tonight and we'll see you next week. Stay safe and stay well. Thank you.